Hello again, everyone. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I call it sell the news because I think that's exactly what happened this last week. Uh, you know, we had uh, the rally during the week, a pretty strong bounce, and uh, everybody was focused on the stimulus or relief bill, whatever you want to call it. And it passed the Senate, and then it finally got passed through the House on Friday, and a couple hours later, right around might have been right after the market closed, I'm not sure, but everybody knew President Trump was going to sign it, and he did. And then the market sold off big time in the last 30 minutes of the day. All right, before I dive in, well, let me just show you what we're going to talk about. We're going to start off with the NASDAQ, then we're going to look at one of the key indicators I look at, the McClellan Oscillator. We're going to check in on the Semiconductor Index and take a look at the German DAX index and see what's happening over there. All right, so here with the NASDAQ, you can see here's the 30 minute, here's the daily, and here's the weekly. And we're gonna dive into all of this and the LA Wave picture. But before I do that, I just want you to remember that uh, if you wanna have more of this kind of detailed analysis and you would like to have it more frequently, head on over to joehenches.net, check out the membership and become a member. All right, let's get back to the NASDAQ. So here's what happened in the last 30 minutes of the day. It dropped significantly. The Dow dropped over 625 points. Uh, the NASDAQ, let's see, it closed at 2.30 central time at 76.94. Let's call it 76.95. And then we closed here for the day at 75.02. So down a hundred and what was it? Sorry, 76.95. So 193 points on the NASDAQ in the last 30 minutes of the day. Big drop at the beginning of the day, slowly chopped its way back in the afternoon until 2.30, and then that was all she wrote. And it pretty much closed right about at the low of the day. It was down 295 points for the day on Friday. So that's the move there. And for the week, the NASDAQ was up 622 points. So you look at this weekly chart and you're like, wow, this is really pretty bullish. And it looks like a bullish engulfing type candle. It opened down here below the previous you know, body. Here's the body of the previous week. Okay, so I call it engulfing because the body of this last week totally engulfs the previous, the previous week. It opened below the close and it closed above the opening of the previous week. So it's bullish, it looks bullish anyway, let's put it that way, but you need follow through, okay? And there's been plenty of these bullish type candles that have occurred throughout on the daily chart and it didn't matter. And especially if you close near the high of the day, it just didn't matter. So we'll see what happens on you know next week and on Monday. Well, let's take a look at the Elliott wave picture in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and blow this out a little bit. Here's where I think we're at. We've had what looks like four waves now of a five wave move. I'm looking for five waves. And once we get five waves, it's gonna confirm that the direction of the market is indeed to the downside, okay? We were looking for that, and I know I've mentioned that before. We were looking for that in October through December of 2018, and then we never got it. You know, we got the, the big fake out. We started to get the bounce at the beginning of January in 2018, and then it never turned back down. So right now, we're watching this very closely in here. We're getting this first bounce. This move back up here for wave two, it, we, it retraced at its high. It actually ended right here when you drill down and look at the uh, more detailed uh, intraday analysis. Okay, but we did retrace a little bit over 50% on wave two. Wave four got very, very close to 50%. And, you know, what we're going to be watching here is to see, does this continue to sell off after that, you know, uh, reversal late in the afternoon on Friday? Or is it going to turn around and then take out, you know, Thursday's high? If it turns around and takes out Thursday's high, then to me, what we're going to have to default to is that five waves are completed. The first wave down is here and that we're in a bigger uh, correction up in here. That would be 50 to 61.8% of this entire move. 
But until that happens, I'm going with this wave structure because I believe this is uh, exactly what's going on. All right. So that's the picture there. Let's take a look at the McClellan oscillator. OK, the McClellan oscillator was deeply, severely oversold for many, many days. OK, and this uh, green line right here is dashed line. That's minus 150 on the oscillator. Anything greater than minus 150, you know, down here, minus 200, minus 300, minus 400 is severely oversold. And that's where we are. And then all of a sudden here this last week, we get this. It's almost like all the air is coming out of the pressure the huge pressure to the downside and we get this big move up here and we literally on Thursday became severely overbought. We got a, well above plus 150. Now we've pulled back a little bit with the move on Friday, but it puts us still at an overbought reading of plus 112. So, you know, the, the, the severe pressure down here was released this last week. But in my mind, what that just sets us up for is the ability to come right on back down. Now, when I look at the summation index, the McClellan summation index, you're like, OK, what is that? That This is a cumulative of the oscillator, OK? And so again, we're looking at this is the zero line. And then, you know, positive, negative. So where are we right now? Where did we get to, actually? The low reading here on March 24th was minus 28.32. And where we're at right now is minus 25. But I'm going to focus on this low reading. OK, coming from above zero and going to minus 28. The last time this kind of a move happened with the summation index, it happened twice in the middle of 2008, in July and October. OK, so we're back to, you know, we're back to moves and indicators and things that we're comparing to the financial crisis in 2008. And then, of course, you've heard a lot of the references in terms of the volatility back to the 1930s and 1929, because we haven't seen anything like this since that period of time. And that should be telling you something. OK, let's take a look at the semiconductor index. OK, here's my uh, analysis of the semiconductor index, the SOX. It's what they call the SOX. OK, so I think we're in a fourth wave. Now, the interesting thing here is look how deep this fourth wave did pull back, though. It pulled back almost to 61.8%. And I'm talking about a retracement four versus three. OK, so what I'm doing is I'm comparing this move as a percent of this move. And we got very, very deep. OK, back up here in wave two, we got a little bit over 50 percent on wave two as a percent of wave one, two versus one. But right now we've had a real, real deep move in here. And my expectation is for this to come back down. Now, Friday, this is a daily view. You can see it says one day right here and you can see up in here uh, right here. OK, so we got to close below Thursday's low. OK, so and again, that reversal that happened in the last 30 minutes on all of the indices and, indi and indicators. OK, so this is the picture. Let me drill down real quick into the hourly view. I don't do this. I'm not going to be doing this a whole lot, but I just wanted to show you that based on this projection that here's what we'll be looking for is for a wave five to come down here. But again, it's going to be very similar to what I just talked about on the Nasdaq. If we turn around and take out this high, then something else is going on and something uh, you know bigger in terms of a bounce. But right now, I would say the odds kind of favor that we're going to get this move back down again. All right, let's take a quick look at the German DAX. OK, here's the German DAX. And on Friday, the DAX was down 368 points, uh, closing at 96.32.52. So let's drill in and take a look at the hourly. Let's take a look at this last move and see how it compares, because it looks like it's dwarfing this move over here that happened. Um, and I'm still labeling this as 1, 2. Now, the thing that happened here is this took a lot longer to flesh out. And I think it was a little more complex. OK, and but yet we never did pull back even to 50 percent. We got above here. We got right into this zone, OK? And so right now, I'm watching again, do we come down and continue to sell off, or do we turn and take out this high? 
Again, if we take out this high, it's going to confirm that something bigger is underway. Um, and we do have an alternate count. I've got alternate counts on all of these. But again, I'm not going to go into all the detail we provide the members. Just trying to give you a perspective in terms of what we think is the primary. And then we'll see where we go from that. All right, so right now, this is the expectation is for this to continue to come back down into wave five. And uh, we'll see how it plays out next week. All right, that's it for this video. And again, if you felt like that video was helpful uh, and would like to have this kind of detailed, well, actually more detailed analysis that we give every day, uh, head on over to the member over here to joehenches.net, check out the membership. And if you felt like the video was helpful, hit the thumbs up here on YouTube and hit that subscriber on the YouTube channel so you get notifications when the uh, next video is released. Everyone have a uh, great weekend and be safe. Boy, the virus is just exploding around the globe.